Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now one of the most commonly asked questions I get here on the channel is, Steve, why is your head so big? I can't answer that unfortunately, but what I can answer is the second most commonly asked question, which is, what PC do you really use on a daily basis? After all, you buy and test all these computer parts, what rig are you really hiding? at home. What sort of supercomputer do you use? Being 100% honest, I don't use anything that you haven't seen before, but I wanted to talk about the setup I use today, go through all of my components and why I use them because I think it might be helpful for any of you looking to build a PC right now, especially considering that the prices are going down. The, pro the, uh, the hardware I use isn't actually entirely what I would recommend. Some of it I use for convenience sake and there are actually some other alternatives that I would probably suggest instead of some of my own hardware. So I'm going to run through what I use, talk about the setup I use, why I use it, how good it is when it comes to what I need it for and then talk about why I think you should buy the parts and perhaps why you shouldn't. So Let's get in. Get I can, what is? I can't even speak. Let's get into it and reveal my super secret high-end setup that really isn't that impressive. I've probably got one of the worst setups here on YouTube in terms of all of us tech YouTubers. It all starts with the desk. I like to keep my desk space tidy as I never know when I'll need to take apart a graphics card or something else that doesn't work as it should. My PC itself is tucked away at the end and connected to a single Samsung S24 R65 2FDU 75Hz 1920x1080 monitor. There's a Samsung 43 inch 4K LED TV next to it in case I have to run any higher resolution benchmarks, but mostly I use that for the PS5. Also on my desk is a pair of what looks to be an old man's glasses, yeah they're mine. There's also a large mouse slash keyboard mat with a wireless Logitech mouse slash keyboard on top. That's right, gone are the days of my old wired Dell mouse. Moving up in the world. It seems as though I've left the budget for the next PC build here as well. And for some reason there's a random AM3 CPU cooler here. Okay. The 1050 Ti sits on top of the desk for decoration along with the i3-12-300 because thanks to Intel I've had a little bit of an upgrade. My daily components sit atop what is actually a mining frame I got on Amazon for about £20. It's just two pieces of thin metal screwed together but because I'm always swapping hardware around it makes more sense to have an open test bench than a traditional case. Under the Noctua NH-U12S that I found inside a used Cache's PC sits an i5-12400F, a 6-core 12th gen part that is ideal for video editing. The i3-12300 is fine, but this speeds things up a little bit. It also means that the 1 and 0.1% lows in games are a bit higher. Why did I put this thing outside? Just look at the ants. Trying to steal my computer, are we? Next up we have the Palette RTX 3050. Not the 3070, not the 1080 Ti, this. Reason being is that it's the quietest card I own under load and it uses less power. For the games I play, this is also more than enough. It's easy to recommend, especially given the DLSS and ray tracing capabilities, but for pure gaming power, I'd actually suggest considering an AMD RX 6600 instead, if, like here in the UK, it's a similar price to the 3050. The 6600 is dropping in cost and it will perform better at native 1080p if you discount things like DLSS and ray tracing. That said, I love this compact palette card and it meets all of my 1080p gaming needs. It really is one of Palette's best GPUs, I think. The graphics card and the processor are paired with 16 gigs of Corsair LPX DDR4. It's actually 3000 megahertz memory that I run at 3200 megahertz, simply by changing a setting in the motherboard's BIOS. The motherboard is a Gigabyte H610M S2H DDR4. 
It is an entry level board that I bought to test the Pentium G7400 a while ago and I decided to keep it and I thought I might as well upgrade to a 1700 socket personal system at the same time. It handles the i5 just fine though, but I'd probably upgrade if I were to ever get a more powerful CPU. That said, it's done a solid job thus far and yes, it supports dual channel memory. I don't know where the rumour came from that H610 doesn't support dual channel because it does, though it is one DIMM per channel. All of this is powered by a Seasonic Focus Plus 80 Plus Gold 550 watt power supply that did have some trouble with the Founders 3060 Ti, but it supports the Palette 3070 just fine and handles this rig like a dream. It's got a fan that switches off under load as well, which is ideal if, like me, you like a quieter system. It's also fully modular, so less cables means it looks tidier on top of the desk. The storage consists of an Aseno 1TB SSD I got on Amazon a while ago, as well as a secondary Mac store 480GB SSD, which I think I found in a second-hand rig. Windows 10 is installed on the bigger Aseno drive. All that's really left to show you is the studio, which I must say has some great natural lighting, and my chair, which belonged to the previous owner of the house, who unfortunately did what most of us will probably end up doing, and um, died. Now honestly, when I'm not benchmarking things, all I'm really playing on this PC is Fallout New Vegas, which normally gives this system no trouble especially as it's capped to the monitor's refresh rate by default. That said, it's running quite terribly here. Now I remember why I bought the 3070. Seriously though, I haven't reinstalled the stutter remover mod as well as a few other mods yet, so this is just what New Vegas does on any system without tweaks, at least the Steam version. My setup is mainly used for editing, but the 12400F and 3050 is still a solid combo worth considering. If you don't have that much to spend, but you want a little more oomph when it comes to CPU power. Now that said, if you do get a 3050, you may as well just get an i3-12100F instead if you want to play some games, as you'll see similar average results due to the GPU bottleneck. The i3 can honestly support much faster GPUs. You could also go with something a bit older, perhaps an 11400F or 10400F, because you'll still get the most out of this graphics card and you'll save a bit more money on the motherboard costs. Perhaps a Ryzen 5600 and entry level AM4 board might also be worth considering. When it comes to gaming, well this combo really does quite well. At 1080p is where it's best suited, but you could certainly crank a few things up to 1440p and enable things like DLSS or FSR in supported titles. I can see myself using this setup for a long time because Fallout New Vegas is already out and like I say, it's all I really play, but for those more demanding AAA games, it does do a pretty solid job as well. I think the CPU will certainly last me a lot longer than the GPU, but on a personal note, this is definitely the graphics card that I'd keep in my system until, well, it just couldn't run the latest titles. Now I don't use the 3050 for benchmarking videos because it doesn't allow us to get the most out of any CPUs that we test. That's why I tend to use a 1080 Ti or a 3070. But when I'm just playing games or video editing, the 3050 will sit inside the system pretty much silently because the fan rarely spins up in Fallout or in DaVinci Resolve, which I use to edit. And the i5-12400F has a custom fan curve enabled, and with the Noctua cooler and fan combo, it barely makes a noise. Add to that the Focus Plus PSU with its silent fan that rarely ever switches on as well, and I've got a very capable yet quiet system on top of my cheap eBay desk. This is certainly a combo I'd recommend, but if you do want more pure gaming power, then perhaps an RX 6600 or, well, Anything could be paired with an i5-12400 to be honest, you could even go with a 3080 and not worry too much about a CPU limitation. That's all for this one then, I hope you've enjoyed a look at my personal and very unimpressive setup in comparison to other tech YouTubers. 
I hope this video also helps you out in terms of any buying decisions you might want to make. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one, when we'll be testing another older, yet these days somewhat overlooked, graphics card.